Did you ever want to learn how to make handles for your crochet hooks, thicker handles, without having to go buy them? Then stay tuned. Okay, so these came from Amazon today. Um, I was happy, but then I started to crochet with them. And I noticed that they kind of have a problem with bending. They're very bendy. I, I hate that. And that's how you get injuries. And so not only is it bendy, it also pops out, which is just the dumbest thing I've ever heard. They were not connected with glue or anything. So after complaining, I grabbed my old hooks these included and we're gonna make our own handles of course I could always buy a bunch of these but they're so expensive I have Primo clay Fimo clay Sculpey clay I don't know what that is but we're gonna put all this together and we're going to make a handle for ourselves at first I was kind of noticing that this clay was soft I was like okay I guess good I threw out one um but I noticed that I'm like oh I'm thinking these are really soft I found this in my clay pile uh it's a little simple tool I think you can get from Michaels it's got little cutters um a knife like a butter knife type thing and a roller it's pretty simple and cute and so this is the hook that I'm going to be covering first because these are one, this is one of my favorite hooks. This is a hook I use for everything. And I'm not exactly sure if I'm gonna use the Freight Harbor tools, um, but you could use it if you want something that's not plastic. So because this clay has sat there for a couple of years, the packaging was a little gross. So I'm gonna grab my non-quarantine gloves that are way too big for my hands because I want to use the fitted ones for everyday life outside my home. Yes, good old Vaseline. You wouldn't think that it would work, but it worked wonders. So I'm just gonna put just a little dollop on my hand and then I'm just gonna rub it around the outside of whatever piece that I'm working on and I'm just gonna squish it until it like squishes down to like almost nothing. And I'm just going to do that over and over again, folding it and just working on a piece of clay. Listen, for people who work with clay every day, know exactly what they're doing, whatever, um, I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm just going off the knowledge that I've had when I was younger what to do with clay um, so I'm not at all a professional thought I should mention that yeah I have no idea what I'm doing but clay is pretty easy to work with what I noticed with using this technique that um, which is the only technique I have right now because I really didn't feel like going to the store is that with the Vaseline it leaves a really like a residue of whatever color clay you're going to be using so that's the only downside which is okay because you have gloves right okay so I determined that this is soft enough to work with, so I took my gloves off because I don't have any residue to worry about anymore. So I'm gonna make little snakes out of this, but I'm gonna do it really, not too thin, but then not too thick that we can't bend them around the crochet hook. So I'll show you what size I'm going to end up making the snake into. So after it got too long for my hands, I laid it flat on the table and started rolling with the palm of my hand. Mm -hmm. 
make sure to periodically check to see if you have any hairs in it. So now that we have our snake, we can go grab our crochet hook. So I'm not really using any special technique here. I'm just going to make sure that I cover the bottom of the crochet hook. Other than that, I'm going to take the crochet hook in one hand, the clay in the other, and I'm going to just take the crochet hook and spin it. I'm not going to try to wrap the clay around it. I don't know if I've been saying clay or, or yarn, but hopefully I've been saying clay. And just take and hold the crochet hook, hold the clay in your other hand, just to keep it straight. But other than that, I'm just gonna spin the crochet hook and do it that way. So last minute, I just realized I'm about to cover up what size this hook is. So be sure to write it down before you cover it up. So this is what it should start to look like. So at this point, it's a good idea to hold your crochet hook in your hand, how you would crochet. And if you see where that little hook part is, it's always flat at that point for your thumb. So at that area, I like to take a little knife and flatten that out so it could be just like a regular crochet hook because it is. Just like this. And from this point, you should be able to hold it and be able to tell the difference. So from this point, it's a good idea to cut the clay because you don't want it to go any higher than this. Otherwise your yarn will keep hitting it. Now from this point, all you have to do is press your clay in in place. You don't have to take as long as I took to do that though. Now at the bottom of the hook, I am trying to press it in place so I can cover up that metal part because if I don't, over time it's gonna cut right through my clay. Okay, this is the best I can do. Now let's go bake this. I baked it at 245 degrees for about 10 minutes. So after I baked it, I realized that I forgot to scrape in with a needle the size of this hook. So just don't forget to scrape in the sizes. Now I'm ready to do another hook.
So after I flattened my little area for my thumb, um, I wrote down what the size of this hook is. And then I'm going to grab a little needle. The thinner you can find, the better. And I'm going to scrape in there the size of this needle or hook. So this is the best I can come up with. It's not pretty. It's not like we're selling it. So now let's bake that. Remember 245 degrees for 10 minutes. Another thing that's really important when it comes to working with clay is be sure to have Ziploc bags on hand. Make sure you clean up all your messes. Otherwise you're gonna really end up with some clay that you can't use ever again. You can't soften it. So that's why it's really important to clean up your messes and don't be lazy and leave it lying around. And by God, take it out of that nasty, gross plastic paper with the ink that's gonna melt all over your hands later on. So I just wanna take a few minutes to try it out um, to make sure that it's not too thick for my hands and make sure that the clay doesn't go too close to where the hook is. I try to keep them all uniform and try to stop where the clay end on the crochet hook as evenly as possible on all of them. So basically when you're crocheting, your yarn will have a tendency to slide down the crochet hook and you just want to make sure it doesn't slide down it has enough room to slide down so that's what I did with it and so that's what I'm doing here is I'm going to try it out to make sure that it has enough room to slide around um, because there's sometimes there's some um, crochet stitches that requires a lot of loops and you want to make sure you're going to be able to ha have room for those loops on your hook so that's what I'm trying to do here so so far so good um what i did notice though is that this one crochet hook right here it's a little too thick for me i do have another green hook that is a little thinner than that and i I noticed a difference immediately. Um, it's not something that would kill me to use it all the time, um, but I'm gonna, for my next couple of hooks that I want it to cover, I wanna make sure that it's not that thick. So, you know, you're never gonna know what you're gonna like until you start crocheting with it. All right, so this is the first crochet hook that I did. Um, so I wanted to try this one out too. And as you can see, it's the skinniest one that I have. Obviously, it is a smaller hook. It's an E-hook, so it's going to be smaller, and that's good, and that's okay. I'm so excited for all the crochet hook handles I have to make. I hope you guys can use this information that I graced you with in this video to make your own crochet hook handles. And as always, thank you for watching.